Hey, welcome back to Brighter Rays. We are looking at this phrase, love your neighbor as yourself, love thy neighbor. And uh, today's study is called Not Under the Law. So that's what we're going to be looking at. Now, I think it's important for us to state here that as Christians, we do not believe that we can be justified by keeping the law of God. The problem is not that there is something wrong with the law. The law is perfect. The law is good. Keeping the law of God is doing good. If you're going to do good, you keep the law of God. The problem, the problem is, is us. The problem lies with us. Paul reminds us in Galatians 3, Cursed be everyone who does not abide by all things written in the book of the law and do them. So, Paul says, hey, if you don't do everything in the book of the law, then you're cursed. Okay, go to James. We know this one, for whoever keeps the whole law but fails in one point has become guilty of all of it. So if you are trying to be justified by works, by keeping of God's law, if we're trying to earn favor with God and get into heaven by doing the works of the law, we fail. If we break one commandment, we've already lost it. We, we're done. We're the game over. You know, you broke one law, that's it. Now you've heard people when they are asked why they should be allowed to, to go to heaven, why they should be allowed in heaven, or if, they're, if you ask them if they're a good person, they say things like, well, you know, I've never murdered anyone, or I've never cheated on my boyfriend, or I always pay my taxes, you know, I don't cheat on my taxes, I don't take money from the government or anything like that. So, But what are these people doing when they say this? They're appealing to the law, right? They're saying, well, I don't murder. I don't commit adultery, I don't lie, I don't steal. But if you're going to use keeping the law as your defense, then you have to keep the law perfectly. I mean, you might say, well, you know, yeah, I've stolen things in the past. Boom, done. You are guilty. You are a convicted, you know, moral criminal. That's how it is. But you have to keep the law perfectly if you're going to use that as your defense because, you know, the accuser will be like, hey, guess what? Uh, back um, in grade school, when, you know, they went on a field trip, he stole some toys. Uh, you know, it's like, oh, dang it. I broke the law. And I'm guilty. And so you don't have a defense. You know, so you have to keep the law perfectly. Otherwise, you're under the curse of the law, which we know is eternal death for the lawbreaker. That's it. Even before we get into the details of loving your neighbor, uh, a problem has arisen, right? If all I tell an unbeliever is that they must love their neighbor as their self, what have I done? <laughs> as, as a Christian, should I ever tell a, 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 an unbeliever to love their neighbor as their self? I'm telling them they have to keep the law of God. They must keep the law of God, which of course they can't do. And I can't do it. Why would I tell an unbeliever they must keep a law that they cannot keep and put themselves under a curse that will most certainly come upon them? Wouldn't it make, wouldn't it make more sense instead of encouraging unbelievers to love their neighbor? It, it doesn't make more sense to explain to them that they cannot love their neighbor as themselves. They can't do it. They, they're going to fail. They're going to fail every time. They failed already. And because of their failure, they're doomed to eternity in hell. Wouldn't that make more sense to say? You know, it says, telling people, oh, love your neighbor as yourself. Tell them, hey, you can't love your neighbor as yourself. You have failed at that. You are a failure every day at that. Because you're breaking God's laws. You're breaking the Ten Commandments. You aren't doing what it says. And so you're a failure at that. You, that's not going to earn you heaven. You're not going to get there because you, even when you do try to do that, you're still imperfect at it. So, you know, after all, isn't that what the prophets and, and the New Testament writers do? They point people to their failures to keep the law and then call them to cry out to God for mercy because that's all we have left. I mean, they, the prophets over and over again, even Paul and James, and that's what they're doing. They're saying, hey, you know, if you keep the law of God, good, but guess what? You, you fail. You're guilty of it all, as James says. As Paul says, you're cursed because you're trying to justify yourself 
by the law. Now, can I, as a saved Christian who is justified by grace through faith in Jesus Christ, tell another Christian that they must love their neighbor as themselves? Here we have a different scenario. Can I go up to another Christian and say, hey, you need to love your neighbor as yourself? The answer is yes. So I can go up to a brother and sister in Christ and say, hey, you know what? Uh, you're lying. You're not loving your neighbor as yourself because you're lying. And so you need to love your neighbor as yourself by telling the truth. Yes, so we can do that. Loving your neighbor is good. It's holy. It's the right thing to do. It's what Christians should desire to do, right? As, as believers, we want to fulfill the law of God. We do it out of love for our Heavenly Father and out of genuine love for our neighbor because now we know what it is. We understand that we will always fail at loving our neighbor. We know that. We're not going to be perfect at that until we are made perfect in the presence of Jesus. There's no way for us to do that here on earth. We're sinners. We sin. That's what we do. Even saved sinners are going to fail at keeping the law of God. We will only keep the law of God perfectly when we get to heaven. But that doesn't stop us from growing and maturing and desiring more of the good things of God, right? We want to do more of that. We want to honor our parents more. We want to stop lying. We want to stop hating and murdering people in our hearts. We want to stop lusting after people and committing adultery, real adultery, and, you know, spiritual adultery. We want to stop those things. And so we, as believers, ought to encourage our fellow believers in doing good, in keeping the moral law of God. That should be one of our encouragements. And so, loving our neighbors ourself is good for Christians, not a good thing to tell all believers. Because you're telling, hey, love your neighbors yourself. Try to justify yourself by the law, unbeliever. Hey, person doomed to hell, guess what? Try to make yourself good. We don't, we shouldn't do that. We shouldn't do that. Now we can say, hey, love your neighbors yourself, and guess what? You, you can't do that. <laughs> You're going to fail. But this is throw out there, love your neighbors yourself, and then you fill in the blank with whatever you want, and then throw that at people. Not the way to do it. Not the way to do it. So that's the end of our study today. Uh, next time we're going to take a look at the law of love and see what this is all about.